Okay, well that's going on behind us. What does it actually cost to own a cat? We're gonna break everything down for you and go through what we pay on a pretty much monthly basis for our cats. These prices are for South Africa. We are going to put the dollar value in and post, um, but I don't know if it uh, basically translates the same way. I don't know if the costs are the same. Uh, yeah, all I'm gonna do is convert what our rand price was at the time of filming or editing. So you're welcome to let us know um, what it costs on your side of the world, um, wherever you are. Tell us which country you live in and how much it costs more or less to own a cat over there. We'd actually be quite interested in knowing. We've been asked this a lot actually of how to have a kitten on a budget basically. And or how much, it, how much we paid to adopt Momo. So we got Momo from our vet, um, which means there was just a small adoption fee just basically to guarantee that we would um, care for him and that we were taking ownership of him and so on. Um, it is our usual vet, so he was registered with them right away and he was born there, so it was a pretty good deal. Um, I think I paid around 200 rand adoption fee. Woo! <laughs> um, However, on average, from our SPCA, which is basically our local rescues... Why would you um, gonna listen to us? They're all gonna watch them. That's fine. <laughs> um, at our local SPCA, the adoption fee is usually between 400 and 500 rand. However, that includes the first set of vaccinations, um, the neuter and the microchip. So they generally won't adopt out cats in South Africa unless those three things have been done because they obviously, as a rescue, want to avoid breeding and um, want the cats to be in good health. So it's, it's all things that we recommend you get if you do adopt yes. a cat. So the reason Momo was in a way cheaper is because he was too young to be sterilized at the time, plus he then had health issues, so we did have him sterilized quite late. Um, but because the vet also knew that all our pets are neutered and they know us and they can trust us, um, it was a different situation. But generally, if you rescue a pet in South Africa, the adoption fee will be a little higher because they will insist on the new to the vaccinations and the chip so that all your basic care for the kitten is sorted from the beginning. You still have to get the second vaccinations and so on, but we'll get to that. However, if that isn't covered by the breeder or the SBCA, it's a, obviously a lot more expensive yeah. initially. So generally, a vaccination, well, the first set of vaccination plus um, consultation and so on, a general checkup at the vet in South Africa, South Africa, blah, 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 costs around 800 rand. So that's for the consultation, which will be a general checkup, um, your vaccines, your dewormer, and a tick and flea treatment. So that's the standard that comes with a yearly checkup, which is what your kitten will need to get. And then generally there's a flat rate of 90 to 100 rand for the microchip. Cost hasn't changed. And that's changed. obviously a once off. Yeah. I mean, you don't get a new microchip every month. So that's something you do only once. We do highly recommend you get your pets microchipped. Even if your cat is an indoor cat, you never know if they could slip out. And it is really a way, there's so many stories online if you check. And all that applies to the neutering and the vaccines as well. Although none of our cats can actually leave the property, you never know something else might enter the property because they are outdoor cats, so it is very important. Yes, you never know when another animal could come into your property and meet your cat. You get stories of uh, pets being reunited with their their owners and it's really sweet. So it's really it's really important that if something happens, um, our cats generally do wear collars, but we don't have tags on them yet. But we know that if, some, if they get out or if something were to happen, if they get taken to a vet or an SPCA, they will get checked and they will be able to contact us. Yeah. And there's other ones of purchases, which are, I call them hardware items, which are things like the litter box, the carrier, that kind of stuff. It's actually, it's actually mainly just the litter box and the cat carrier that you'll need. And litter boxes and carriers both can obviously range anywhere from a cheap 200 rand litter box or carrier to a super expensive, expensive, expensive catted branded carrier or litter box that costs anywhere on a thousand rand. So for the litter boxes, what you can start with, and I actually generally recommend you start with, is you can get at like your dollar stores, your plastic stores. 
you can basically get really simple trays and they're usually quite shallow which is actually perf perfect for kittens because all those really fancy litter boxes tend to be quite high because cats dig which we have with Maya who will then get litter everywhere even though we have a higher litter box and we have a litter box with a rim to try and minimize it um, but for kittens because they're generally quite small when you get them the shallower trays are actually better because they struggle less to get in and out um, so that's actually a great way to start you can start with a shallow one and then as the cat grows older you can start bumping them up to something more permanent and something more durable so we actually still have a shallow litter box in our in our shed so if we ha ever have kittens you can also like keep the box and then reuse it if you ever get a second cat or something like that yeah and they're nice and it's obviously durable stuff that you don't need to replace with every cat you get you can but you don't have to so if you want to save some money just keep the litter boxes keep them clean and well maintained and then you'll have it for life basically the general rule is one litter box per cat we don't do that but it's simply because our cats can go outside and we'll and generally they do go the outside garden. most of the time um the only reason we still have a litter box is because momo refuses to pee when it rains outside um so the litter box is there for rainy days and that's why we only need the like one today. <laughs> like today so that's why we only need the one and we do keep it pristine we work from home so we can clean it pretty much as they go um, but the general recommendation is one litter box per cat and that will avoid your cat going in places he shouldn't because cats are known to do that if the litter box isn't clean or there's too little too few litter boxes per cat then they will tend to start going in other areas that they're not supposed to like pot plants um, laundry or, baskets are a big one or Momo when he was little before we figured out how pedantic he was about litter boxes like to pee the bed that was lovely well that moves us on to the monthly items and we're gonna start with the food because I suppose that's the most in-depth thing to discuss because there is such a huge variety of things that you can feed cats these days Obviously the most common is just your normal kibble. Listen, we're not gonna bash it. Um, we fed kibble for, for years. Um, it is the most widely available. If that's where you start, that's where you start. Um, I and know it is where most people will start yep. because it is the cheapest. So basically your kibble is your cheapest option by far. But even there, there are dramatic um, price uh, variations. You can mm. get something and that we wouldn't recommend. You get um, store, brand. store brands. Um, and basically supermarket cat foods, um, which are definitely like the lowest of kibbles you can get. Will also be the cheapest, but quality wise, that's probably where you don't want to go. Then you have the bigger brands like Hills and Royal Canaan and so on and so forth, which we fed for years. And if that's where you want to go, then that's what you do. Alternatively, if you want to kind of meet in the middle, um, there are grain free kibbles. But they obviously the price goes up quite dramatically already. It's double as expensive as just your normal supermarket brand or even your Royal Cannon kind of brand. Everyone will recommend a good quality wet food over kibble because there is just more moisture in it. But that price obviously goes up dramatically again. And in my research, it actually turned out that if you were to feed your cats canned wet food, it would work out even more expensive than if you fed them raw. Now we are feeding our cats a raw diet. However, it is pre-packaged, ready-made meal packs, so to speak. So we know what's going in, we know it's been prepared by professionals, been properly looked after and so on. We're not running that risk of bacteria or parasites or whatever might come with raw. So we, we, we don't need to worry about those kind of problems that might come with it. Food is probably where you're gonna need to put your most of the consideration when, when getting a cat because that's basically like how, well, and it's where you should spend most of your budget. If they're healthy, they need less vet visits. You know, they won't have other conditions possibly. We've seen big improvements in all of their health since starting to feed them raw. Yeah. Things like, like their coats have become not just shiny, but they feel healthier and they shed a they lot shed less. less. Like dramatically less. So it's a huge benefit. And they I think the money the is worth it. also the box less, which means that there's less cleanup, which means less litter to be used. So it is a big consideration. Food is probably the, the big one when it comes to owning a cat. Right, next monthly... The, the breakdown of the litter, the different litter options. Again, there's your crystals, those kind of cheaper options. Then you have super fancy biodegradable stuff that, you know... And it will take um, trial and error for, for litter um, because some cats can be very particular. So we used to use one of the most, most recommended yeah. and I think that was actually the one I liked the most, which is called Cat's Best. It was kind of made out of 
It's recycled, uh, recycled paper. Recycled shaving paper and stuff. And really, it, it so never smelled. It was... Super clumping, super easy to clean, Amazing, yeah. biodegradable, so it's completely natural. Um, however, it was quite thick. And little prints over there <laughs> can't deal with thick litter. Momo likes a very sandy um, litter. So we had that and he didn't like it. And it took us a while to get Momo sorted out when it came to the litter box. Um, he used the litter box, but not always. And then the bed was his um, next option, as we said. So we tried different litters until we found one that works. So we're now using Malton's um, hygiene clumping. So it's quite a fine grind and it does still clump so it's easier to clean. Yeah, unfortunately all of them only come in like fragrance things. They don't smell bad, but it's you don't get that neutral smell, unfortunately. It's just a... But it, it is a like very a, mild, I know that fragrant, uh, fragrance litters are also debated whether they're good for cats or not. Um, thank God the smell is very, very mild, so the cats don't seem to mind it at all. Um, I can barely pick it up even. Maybe so, we've just gotten used to it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a very, very mild smell. I think it's lavender or something. And it's the only one that Momo will use. We've really tried. The only other one we managed to get him to use are the crystals um, because they come in a really fine grind as well. However, um, crystals we found are actually terrible. They, they don't have, they clump. They don't clump and they let, let off like a very fine dust, which mm. I think is very bad for their um, lungs and their breathing as well. So It's very dusty. It doesn't clump. It turns, even though it says that it's like for like, you can leave it in for like one month. Obviously, we don't do that anyways because we have so many cats and occasionally they will all use the litter box it's just it gets dirty really quickly it looks gross really quickly because the um crystals also absorb the urine so the, the whole litter will turn yellow and it's just we used it once or twice and we decided this just isn't worth it for us mm. and so eventually we then ended up with the one we have now which is the one the little prince likes the most this little prince this little prince <laughs> Go with Alice. And so, yeah, there's, again, you're gonna have to try, you're gonna have to see what works for you, what doesn't, and what works for your cat and what doesn't. And ideally you want something biodegradable and uh, clumping is, you want something that clumps, trust me, it makes cleanup so much easier. There again, you'll have to see what works for you and it can go from, um, I think our litter is... 80 bucks a bag. 80, 80 rand a bag. Um, we probably use it, one to two bags a month. That's how little they actually use the litter box. But that's also how good the clumping is. Yeah. Because you can just remove the bits that are clumped together and the rest is still perfectly yeah. fine. I know everyone recommends change the entire litter box every month. I think we change the whole litter box every three or four months. Yeah, because we just really keep topping it up. So we clean it and we top it up and it's actually... But yeah. we're also very pedantic about cleaning it. Yeah, yeah. So like, if someone goes, it gets cleaned immediately, basically. Yes. Okay, um, then... And then the more expensive ones, I didn't actually check the price, but I think it's 150 for, it, the bag is a little bigger. Yeah, but the thing with the more expensive ones as well is, also you don't need to change the yeah. whole bag. That's one of the big selling points of the, what was, what was the- Cat's book? Best. The Cat's Best. You literally take out what's used and just top it up. So the initial Cost. setup is probably much more expensive, but then you just top it up every time. And so it works out almost the same as your cheap litter. Yeah, because the cheap litter, will, you will need to replace the entire litter on a regular basis because it'll yeah. just get gross. Okay, then the next thing, and this is something that's become popular or it's become more available recently, and that's pet insurance. Now, a lot of people laugh at it and like, oh, I don't even insure my pets, but we have we actually think it's actually quite important, especially our cats that can be outdoor or are outdoors most of the time. The main consideration behind it is vets are expensive. And yeah. I think that's a global thing. It, doesn't matter where you are, pet vets are expensive. So the best way to avoid that or avoid having, unless you really have the cash flow to, to allow for big expenses that you can't like predict. I mean, it's like insurance for yourself. You pay the money, but how often do you actually use it? So we used for, who did we? So we have- We claimed back something the other day. It was Momo. Was it Momo? Oh yeah, his abscess. Yeah. When Momo had his abscess, we took him to the vet, paid everything up front, and then we got it back from the insurance, nice and easy. And within two, three days, so you don't have to worry too much. So currently we only have Momo and Ryu insured. The only reason for that is that when we actually started looking into insurance and got the insurance, the girls were all over um, eight years old, which is in South Africa for most pet insurances here is the cut off um, to get a pet insured. Um, because obviously as they get older they'll have more issues so that doesn't mean that Momo and Ryu won't be insured when they're that old it just means that if your pet is over eight years old 
they, they won't take they them, won't on, take as them on as a new client. So but unfortunately, we could only do the two boys. But that means that if something happens, um, so we went for the there are different plans as well. So you can choose. There's like a, it's like with people yeah. or with humans. Well, it depends because you know you have some countries where you don't have to pay for pe- yeah, medical. Okay, in insurance. South Africa, it's pretty much the same as medical aid in South Africa. Yeah. So, you get different levels and with the more you pay the more you get basically so we are on the um, middle plan we didn't go for the cheapest there's three in our insurance there's a basic plan there's a middle plan and there's a comprehensive plan so momo and riwa are covered for illnesses and for accidents um so if which one is of them the gets, most important yeah. i think because if something does happen in the garden or one of them falls off if they get into a cat know. fight which obviously they don't because they don't leave the property but if they were to they oh. would be covered for that if one of them managed to somehow get out and got hit by a car, that would be covered. Um, again, we have to pay up front, but then we can claim it and it comes back within 24, 24 to 48 hours, we, we get the money back. Um, and then if you do want to have your vaccines and so much and so on covered, there is the comprehensive plan covers everything. So there you have your grooming is included, your dentals are included, your vaccines are included. We didn't think it was worth it for us um, at that stage because the vaccines, we know how much they cost. It's a once off once a year. And I think it actually turns out cheaper for us to just pay the vaccines once a year. So we bribed them with catnip, by the way. It's the only reason here. <laughs> Alternatively, what you can do is have a little side account where you just put money and use it that way. You can almost have your own little private pet insurance kind of thing. But we found it really works out in the long run when something does happen. I mean, the problem is you can't predict predict what's going to happen. You can't predict if uh, you might have a pet that gets sick a lot. Unfortunately, it happens. And all accidents do happen. And again, vets are expensive, unfortunately. And Therefore, we pay our insurance is 155 for one cat, so we pay 310 for for him for Momo and Ryu, which is Again, quite cheap. We don't know how much that how much this might cost in the states or wherever you are, Germany, whatever. So this is really just our personal experiences. Yeah. But we highly recommend the insurance. Yeah, we find that it, it's really worth it. Okay, then there's the annual stuff, and that also kind of ties in with the insurance because most of it is health related. For instance, you need your annual vaccines. <laughs> and your annual checkups. So as I said at the beginning of the video, for us, it's around 800 Rand. Um, that's the consultation, the vaccines, and so on and so forth. I'm a big fan of the yearly checkups, um, just because it just keeps, it forces you to bring your pet to the vet. Um, they'll do, ours are very thorough. They check weight. They'll have a look at the teeth, at the eyes, at the ears. They'll have a feel of the stomach. They'll really make sure that everything's a-okay. That would be the first like moment before any symptoms are shown. If they see something that worries them. Yeah, er- early, early detection is obviously key when it comes to anything. So going regularly is very important. And and we have all the cats. And especially at their age, it's important to make sure that they stay in a good condition. So once a year, we also obviously we can weigh them in between but we can make sure that their weight stays the same and they just get their boosters and it's quick and easy. Um, we're also lucky with our vet, if we bring all the cats in at once, we get 10% off our bill. So <laughs> we try to make it like a whole excursion. Okay, and then there's basically just all the additional stuff, toys and beds and cat trees and stuff to keep your cat entertained, which is extremely important as well. And this is where you can be smart and spend very little or you can be extravagant and spend a lot and spoil them. So for toys, the best way to save money is rotation. Don't leave the toys lying around, yeah. like take them away and then try to bring them out in a different order every time just to keep the interest high. Catnip is your best friend. But again with the toys also you can spend a lot or you can spend a little. Yeah. We found that if you spend a lot the toys generally get ignored and if you spend a little that's the ones I get played with. I so mean just save. recently when we 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 got that video of the robot ball which will okay but the up. ball is actually not that expensive the, we, we, i bought that robot ball and then they're all kind of afraid of it and then yesterday we bought a it's like a cardboard mat with a ball around it and the scratch post and some wobbly things and it costs the same as the ball but they're much more entertained by the mat because they can scratch it and stuff than they are with the ball. Well, what I was going to compare it to is we spent on the electric ball and if you give Momo a normal little round like cat ball or even a ping pong ball, which no. is half the price. Actually, the best comparison is the fancy feather toy yes. that costs 200 Rand versus the stick that we found in the garden. <laughs> which was free. Exactly. So again, here you can go nuts and spoil the cats. I would say save money on the toys and rather get a massive cat tree if you have the space in your house because 
they go nuts for that and it'll stop them, well, it's supposed to stop them from scratching anywhere else, it kind of just... So scratchers you know. and cat trees, in my opinion, are a must. Um, and you want to spend more on those so that they're well constructed because when I see how Momo goes up and down our cat tree, if it weren't built proper, properly, it would collapse within seconds. We had a different one which did yes. break eventually because of how vigorously he went up and down it. So we invested a bit more on a better one and this one's now been uh, for, three for or four years, years now even. So yeah, with the cat tree, don't cheapen out. Um, rather save up, get a proper one, get one that's built correctly. And however, if you spend that money, it's kind of a once off. Mm. You have it, a good cat tree should last you five to 10 years easily. Um, so you're basically buying the cat tree for the cat for its entire life. In yeah. theory. And remember, if you do have more, a couple cats and they do tend to fight or something, you want places high up for them to uh, like hide up and get feel safe. That's that's the most important thing and that's why we're going to invest in another one eventually that's nice and tall and massive. But you can buy it in like waves. You can get one, then get the next. Um, you don't have the, to get them all at once. And then the big one for me is scratchers. So that's not a cat tree. You can get the cardboard ones, which is one of the ones we just bought as well. You can replace them. They're generally quite cheap. I think here they're around 100 to 200 bucks, depending on the size. And they last surprisingly long. It's those cardboard ones and they, you know. And I'm yet to see a cat that doesn't enjoy the cardboard ones. I mean, we brought the new one in and the cats took turns to scratch on it immediately. Alternatively, you also get different like scratches that you can attach to things. We have, um, we don't have Ikea here in South Africa, but um, because we're a family in Europe, Ikea has these really neat um, wrappers and it's made out of rope and you can wrap it around your table legs and so on. Yeah, um, and the cats, they love that. And then if you want to invest real good money, buy a catnip plant. Mm. That's what we've been baiting Momo on the bed with, he goes absolutely nuts for it. You literally squish the leaves and you rub it on toys and stuff and they go absolutely nuts for it. And if it grows well enough, you can dry your own catnip. Yeah, we just can't live, leave it. It's growing in hanging pots because otherwise the cats would just eat it. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, scratches are a big one um, and cat toys. Again, you don't have to go expensive. You can start cheap, get the cardboard ones. Um, get the little mice, the little balls, ping pong balls, anything that will catch their attention. Cats are really easy to entertain, especially when they're kittens. And then you can always buy more expensive toys as you go or or not. I mean, again, Momo will play with pretty much anything we throw on the floor, including cable ties, bottle lids, mm. scrunched up paper balls. The thing that we forgot was food balls. You'll have seen in our, when we got the Rogs balls, we started off with cheap plastic balls and then upgraded to more expensive nice stainless steel balls. Again, it's an investment. These balls will last us forever, as long as we keep care, take care of them, wash them properly and stuff. And stainless steel won't leach any chemicals or anything like that. So I think it's a well, worthwhile investment, helps your cat's health. You basically have to be smart with how you how you start. Spend where you need to spend and then don't spend in, in other areas. And again, the great thing is you'll have your cat for 12 to 20 years, depending on, on your cat's lifespan. And that means that you can start on one thing and end on another. And I think that's it. I think we covered everything. I hope we covered everything. If we didn't, leave us a comment and let us know. Also, let us know if these prices kind of line up with what you guys pay or if you it's more expensive in other countries. I assume it is. I think there's other things that come into play in other countries. Like I know in Germany, I think you need to register your pets or something. I know German. you have to do it with dogs. I don't know if you have to do it with cats. With dogs in Germany, you have to register your dog with the government. We hope you enjoyed this and we hope you'll, we'll see you in the next one. Remember to hit that subscribe button and share, 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 share. And we'll check in the next one. Cheers. Bye.